So today we will talk about uh, in, in just about one lecture this fairly broad rather interdisciplinary topic of combustion instability. Uh, of course we include this because it is uh, my favorite topic and I, don't, I wanted to cover this as part of the lectures on combustion. Again the, the goal here is to show that uh, whatever we have learnt in the laminar framework can be uh, used to understand more complicated problems and one of them being combustion instability. Early on um, I think Williams had actually identified that there are, there are three aspects to combustion instability. Uh, one, one of them is intrinsic instability. The second one is combustor instability and the third is system instability. So we will first briefly look at what these individually mean and then we will start looking at the details of each of these but before that we should also first of all look at the word instability regardless of combustion okay. The idea of instability is not specific, specific to combustion it is a it is something that comes from what we call as perturbation theory so essentially it is an idea of course uh, much more than that I think it is a much more commonsensical idea there are, there are lots of things around us which are uh, which, which show inherent characteristics of instability uh, so some extremely social examples would be like for example uh, if I do not do exercise I grow way heavier and then I, that makes me do more makes it more difficult for me to do exercise and then I, I keep growing heavier and so that is an instability right or uh, the other possible the other, the other example is uh, if people stop using public transport then public transport run in losses therefore they run less buses and therefore we, st we still are uh, going away from using public transport the buses now stop running and so on. So lots of such social uh, situations or you know um, human situations you can go through what is called as instability. So the basic idea is if you now have a system which we think is in equilibrium uh, and then we now try to make a lot of small perturbation uh, question is is the system coming back to the original position or is it it, it it goes away from the original position. So here there are a few different things that are kind of important you could actually have a dynamic system which is in equilibrium locally that means at a particular uh, set of parameters. So for example in a, in a flow system you could have a uh, the, the parameters could be Reynolds number in a combustion system the parameter could be equivalence ratio. So you could now be running an engine at a set of conditions like air flow rate and the equivalence ratio pressure and initial temperature of uh, 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 reactants and, and, and so on. And then for these set of conditions you now have some equilibrium and what we are talking about is perturbing about an equilibrium for this given set of conditions. If you now move your set of conditions you now reach a new equilibrium and that need not necessarily be stable as the previous set of conditions for which you had an equilibrium. So equilibrium does not necessarily mean stability you could have a unstable equilibrium or a stable equilibrium. So for example the best example is for example for you now have like a, a rod that is hanging uh, from a pivot um, so, and then if, if it is like this and then you now tap it it is supposed to go through a, a sinusoidal a, a oscillatory motion like a pendulum and the, the, the what is called as a set point that is the equilibrium is where it is actually hanging down because of gravity uh, uh, but, but, but then if you now can also hold this rod up here then that is also actually in equilibrium the, the weight of the rod is actually being balanced by the support uh, but now, now you try to tap it it now starts going farther and farther away from uh, uh, the, the equilibrium. So the, the top position is an equilibrium as well but it is an unstable equilibrium when compared to the bottom position. So the examples that we talked about where we are talking about the physical weight uh, of a person versus the exercise uh, is, is a situation where we were talking about something that was unstable so that is what is instability uh, connoting there uh, that means you have a situation and then any small perturbation keeps you going away from that, that, that position. So that is what we really mean by instability to begin with. Uh, intrinsic instability then is actually a instability where you do not have anything else 
coupled to the combustion it is only the combustion itself that is unstable right. So the, the flame exhibits instability by itself. A combustor instability on the other hand is a system of flame coupling with acoustics in the combustor so this is this is a flame acoustic system where you have a, a feedback loop between the flame and the acoustics in the combustor we will talk in greater detail about this but essentially here it is not a standalone combustion alone a combustion that is going unstable it is combustion coupled with acoustics in the combustion chamber that, that is going unstable uh, so that is the combustor instability. The system instability is feedback with let us say uh, fuel supply uh, air supply or oxidizer supply etc. That means it now is a bit more specific to how the system actually is uh, configured which is going to cause this instability again we will talk in greater detail about this. So let us first talk about the intrinsic instability here. We shall talk about uh, premix flames, plain pre, or should say premix flames. I shouldn't say prim, plain premix flames because that's that, that that's the point of contention as far as the instability is concerned. Let's look at premix flames. We have talked about the issues involved in here. We could talk about uh, two things. One is the thermal diffusive instability. And the other one is the uh, Darius Lando instability. And we have actually discussed this previously when we were talking about corrections to the laminar flame speed, okay. And there we were basically talking about uh, the, these effects of the flame curvature and the flow divergence effects right. So what we were basically saying is if you now have a, a, a planar flame and then let us suppose that you now perturb this right then we have the situation where the, the heat is actually going radially outward in a, in a, in a, a flame that is curved concave relative to the upstream reactants of course the flow is going from left to right. And in this case the heat is actually converging while the heat is um, diverging here and converging here the reactant flow or the, the reactant diffusion into the flame is happening the opposite direction that means here all the reactants are actually converging towards the flame and all the reactants here are actually diverging. So you have a lesser concentration of reactants in this uh, flame but they get heated up more but you have a, uh, a greater concentration of reactants but they are getting heated up less because the heat is getting distributed right. So now the question comes what is the effect of Lewis number. So the thermal diffusive instability is directly a consequence of non-unity Lewis number. So when you have a non-unity Lewis number then the heat conduction upstream to the reactants and the reactant diffusion downstream to the flame they do not happen exactly over the same length scale right. So when you and we have gone through this we said when we have a, a, a larger Lewis number that means your 
conductive effects are actually more when compared to diffusive effects whereas, uh, whereas it is opposite. So depending upon this what you will find is there are ranges of Lewis numbers for which you will have something that is unstable right so this leads to unstable flame or oscillatory or stable flame right what is what, what is meant by that is I mean the, the again going back to the idea of a instability in general if you now have a, a uh, equilibrium point and then you now give it a perturbation and then you are now try, trying to track what happens to the amplitude of the perturbation with time right if it, it comes down like this that is that is stable if it now grows like that that is unstable the, the, the uh, amplitude keeps on exponentially growing that is unstable the other possibility is it, it, it looks like it is actually coming closer to uh, the, the equilibrium point but it begins to oscillate right for clarity let us also look at a couple of other situations where you could you could it, do, it could look like it is coming back but then it, it oscillates and then its amplitude keeps growing right so this is a this is oscillatorily unstable and uh, the third situation the, 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 other, the other situation of course is when you now have, have something that, that uh, uh, comes back in an oscillatory manner right so then, then, then the, this becomes stable that means the, the uh, amplitudes are dying, dying down but in an oscillatory manner. So there, there are many such possibilities what we are talking about here is a possibility where the amplitudes remain constant. In fact this refers to like the way the pendulum behaves so when you now give it a tap it looks like it comes back but it kind of misses the equilibrium point because of inertia and then oops it went to the other side then it goes back and it looks like okay it is going to be stable but oops it went, went to the other side and so on. So since you now look at a um, displacement and then at, that, at, at a small perturbation it looks like it is coming back you will tend to think that it is stable but that is what is called as only static stability but dynamically it now actually attains an equilib a neutral equilibrium of an oscillatory state okay and then of course in nonlinear dynamics it, they, they would uh, refer to it as a hop bifurcation and so on we will not get into all that jargon here uh, we, we, we will just say that for example you could lead to an unstable flame that means when you now have a plane premix flame that is perturbed it could now get uh, uh, become increasingly non planar right so if it now starts getting curved and curved more and more and more that that is an unstable flame a stable flame on the other hand is where you now have a perturbation and then it gets back to being planar right a oscillatory flame is it now starts actually oscillating uh, with a with a certain uh, um, uh, constant amplitude right. So there are, there are many such uh, in fact the, the oscillatory flame is something that I will talk about in the more, more in the context of uh, uh, partially premix flames but, but right now you could say that for different Lewis numbers you can find that you can, you can say uh, the flame becomes unstable or the flame and typically the Lewis numbers of course the Lewis number is actually a function of the um, reactant okay so because it involves the diffusivity of the reactant. So usually we are talking about non-unity lowest numbers of the deficient reactant because the deficient reactant is the one that is that, that, that the flame is more sensitive to okay. The other kind of instability that we are talking about is what is called as the Darius Lando instability or simply hydrodynamic instability and this is also something that we talked about in the context of corrections to the laminar flame speed in some sort of a, a steady state um, framework but not necessarily in a in a, a in a instability framework where what we are talking about is a the a premix flame can be thought, thought of as a, a line of discontinuity between two different regions of different density 
right so you have the cold reactants that are denser you have the hot products that are lighter right. So because of which you now have a, uh, a, a, a flow what, what we talked about at that time was because of which you now have a flow divergence or a flow convergence behind uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, flame which could in turn accentuate the curvature. So the basic idea about the Darius Landau instability is if you now have any uh, interface between two fluids of different densities it is inherently unstable intrinsically unstable or unconditionally unstable right. So that is the kind of mechanism that you will see prevailing in flames as well. So that is like uh, uh, similar examples or for example you, you can look at like uh, a surface of water, water uh, uh, a surface of water with air being the other side so you now have two fluids of different densities separated by the interface. Now this interface now is susceptible to perturbation and when this perturbation happens it now starts forming waves right. So similarly flames also are actually interfaces between fluids of two different densities colder, colder denser reactants and hotter uh, lighter products. So you, you would face hydrodynamic uh, instability as well. In practice you have a combination of both and therefore it is not very unrealistic to expect plain premix flames in the laboratory that is not because they do they are actually both thermal diffusively stable and Darius Lando stable they could be unstable but those instabilities are cancelling each other alright. So where one of the instabilities is actually causing it to go away from the original position the other one is trending to actually get it back to the original position and so on. So one of them could be destabilizing the other one could be stabilizing the stabilizing force uh, the stabilizing mechanism could overwhelm the instable unstable mechanism or if even if both of them are trying to be unstable they counteract in such a way that you now get a stable flame. So this, this is possible. Now in the extreme case where actually you have a unstable flame and you now have this curvature keep on growing then you get into a regime called cellular flames. So this effectively leads to cellular flames where the, 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 plane, the, 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 the premix flame is no longer planar but actually breaks down into many different cells and uh, it, it now reaches a new equilibrium and a new stable equilibrium where it exists as these cells and therefore uh, that, that kind of a flame structure is what is called as a cellular flame. A cellular flame is also a kind of structure also observed for diffusion flames this is diffusion flame instability. So if you now begin to talk about diffusion flames uh, under So you, you, you can also expect cellular flames under some conditions in fact you could, you could expect that the thermal diffusive instability is predominant in diffusion flames because you are expecting diffusion effects to be important there. Uh, Darius Lando instability is not as common because you do not really see like the density jump happening as much as in a, in a premix flame so premix flames are more susceptible to that but in, in reality when you have a non unity Lewis number and you have varying density with temperature you can expect both, both mechanisms to prevail uh, uh, to different extents. Then finally we, we have the situation of partially premix flames and here there are some regimes of Lewis number uh, greater than 1 where uh, you get oscillatory oscillatory stability uh, oscillatory flame that means you are, you are looking at something like a triple flame or uh, something that is more compact essentially like an edge flame. So if you now look at a, a triple flame like this with a splitter plate and then you have uh, fuel on this side oxidizer on that side you have a trailing diffusion flame and uh, you, you have the uh, uh, the, 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 the fuel rich branch and the fuel lean branch there are uh, some Lewis numbers for which this entire structure actually begins to oscillate back and forth at a, at a constant amplitude 
okay and of course if you now change your Lewis number or change your uh, dam color number in fact the dam color number dictates how much should be the standoff distance if you have dam color number is effectively a, a indicator of uh, the finiteness of the chemical reaction rates and uh, uh, so the, f the, the, the more finite the chemical reaction rates are the uh, or, or less close to infinite chemistry uh, the dam color number is more finite and uh, correspondingly the standoff distance will increase. And of course uh, even under stable conditions you will not get equilibrium uh, flame established uh, less than a certain dam color number and, and the flame blows off that is a, uh, a steady state uh, there is a steady state solution does not exist okay. Now for a steady state solution that exists this is susceptible to small perturbations for some great some Lewis numbers greater than 1 where it actually undergoes oscillatory instability also. So that is the case where we were talking about a constant amplitude and of course the amplitude and the frequency are functions of Lewis number and dam color number and, and, and they change continuously. So that is something that uh, and of course you can also think about uh, the fuel, fuel oxidizer ratio uh, concentration gradients that are that the flame is subjected to and so on. So these are the parameters over which the oscillatory instability will manifest. Uh, so that is about uh, intrinsic flame instabilities now let us look at the combustor uh, instabilities here basically what is happening is if you now have a flame that is being perturbed the, the basic thing that we are looking at is what is happening to its uh, properties and these properties mainly in this context could be the heat release rate the, the temperature downstream of the flame the density downstream of the flame of course all these things are related okay. So the, the temperature rise is related to how much is the heat release and the density fall is depend is related to the temperature rise right. So if you now perturb the flame uh, and, and the flame moves around then uh, the, the, the heat release rate undergoes a fluctuation and therefore the temperature goes undergoes, uh, undergoes a fluctuation and the density undergoes a fluctuation. So when you now have these fluctuations they set out acoustic waves away from the flame and these acoustic waves will now go and get reflected at the ends of the combustor and then get reflected back and set up a standing wave and the standing wave is now going to actually fluctuate this flame further and when the flame fluctuates further then it sets out a stronger acoustic wave and so that the, the prevailing acoustics now begins to get amplified and this amplified acoustic wave sets up a stronger standing wave which now oscillates the flame even further and so on. So now you begin to understand that the amplitude of the acoustic oscillations will keep on rising in fact the amplitudes of every oscillation that, that is there keeps on rising right. So this is essentially the coupling of the flame with the acoustics. Of course before I before I proceed further what I should say is this is um, the, 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 the situation that I just described is something that is very simple to think about for a gas phase combustion alright. Um, that means you now have like a gaseous reactant uh, that is gaseous fuel mixing with gaseous oxidizer maybe a premix flame maybe a diffusion flame right. Um, uh, but, but essentially some gas phase flame that is that is undergoing this and then uh, causing this situation. But before before we proceed I also should point out that, that there, are, there are two ways of uh, thinking about this depending upon what we are uh, dealing with. On the one hand you could now deal with uh, gas phase systems, uh, um, gas turbine combustors. Gas turbines combustors could be gas phase systems or liquid phase systems there are land based gas turbines which use like natural gas for uh, powering them or there are uh, things like aviation gas turbines which use liquid fuels for powering them. So you could have the uh, liquid fuel as well uh, in these 
and um, then um, you can also talk about liquid rocket engines, liquid rocket combustors and so on but on the other hand you now also have solid, solid rocket combustors and the way things happen in the solid rocket are slightly different from the way it happens in, in these. Okay. So we will, we will first discuss what happens over here and, uh, uh, and then we will go, go back and look at uh, what happens here. So uh, let us look at, look at the gas phase combustion for example. Gas phase combustors um, could uh, have of course many times we are interested in gas phase combustors being premi uh, having premix flames. So you, you, you could think about uh, a, a combustor in which um, uh, let us say uh, a, a typical typical geometry for us could be uh, what is a, what's a very simple geometry, uh, a, a, a simple geometry for us as far as uh, premix flames is concerned let us suppose that we now take a V gutter okay. So if you now take a V gutter um, we would like to think that you can, you can have a flame that is established like that so it is anchored at the uh, edge of the bluff body and uh, then it, it actually extends out. We talked about this when we were dealing with flame shapes uh, but what we said was the, the flame is trying to, trying to travel with a propagate with a uh, turbulent velocity and then uh, so it, it actually orients itself in such a way that the local normal velocity component matches the turbulent flame speed and, 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 and so on but then the question is what happens when the flow velocity begins to oscillate right. So when the flow, be, the flow velocity begins to oscillate on top of a mean flow right so you have a mean flow but it, it is now going to go back and forth. So why does the flow velocity oscillate to so start your thinking on the loop let us suppose that there is a perturbation and then what we want to point out that this is going to actually give rise to more flow fluctuation okay. So what we are saying is uh, when you now have a flow velocity fluctuation you have a faster flow sometime and then a slower flow sometime. So when you have a faster flow the, the flame is going to actually get more inclined and uh, when you have a slower flow the flame tries to propagate still further in and so it is going to go like that. So essentially now we think that the flame is going to flap back and forth like this right. So when the flame tries to flap back and forth like this look at what is happening to the flame area. So the flame area keeps fluctuating and since the flame area is along which the heat release is happening the total heat release in this region is now going to fluctuate because you had a larger area over which the heat was released versus a smaller area over which the heat was released and therefore you are now going to get heat release fluctuations because of the velocity fluctuations. And the heat release fluctuations now try to send out acoustic waves that amplify this oscillation and when the, ampli and when the oscillation gets amplified further this oscillation is going to become wilder right. So that is the instability that we were talking about but unfortunately life is not as simple as this. So what happens in reality is when you are now trying to actually send this uh, fluctuation the flame simply does not move back and forth like this instead it actually moves more like that. There is a perturbation that happens in bulk for the flow which the flame tries to match but there is also the perturbation that is being sent along the flame. So there are two ways in which this perturbation is propagating one from the boundary along the flame and one in the flow field itself. So depending upon how long the flame is locally the, the wave that is propagating along the, uh, along the flame starting from the boundary and the flow fluctuation that is happening anywhere in the uh, anywhere at any part locally on the flame they are going to interfere constructively or destructively and depending upon that you are now going to get a, a, a wavy pattern. This now adds further to the flame area fluctuations and on top of it we have to consider now that you have 
a non planar flame then we will have to consider the, the, the uh, flame curvature effects and the flow divergence effects on the flame propagation speed okay. So there are, there are all these other uh, things and in reality the other problem that happens is the flame anchor point where the, the, the uh, it, it is actually being held at the uh, 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 flame holder that itself fluctuates because at the anchor point we, we went through this dynamics uh, you now have a entrainment of non reacting gases on the one hand and a heat loss to this and this heat loss begins to fluctuate the entrainment begins to fluctuate so where exactly the flame stops away from the uh, burner that fluctuates and that is where that is where the, the perturbation is being sent along the flame. So if the, the flame itself were to move away and then you now send a fluctuation along the flame to constructively or destructively interfere with the bulk flow fluctuation then the flame shape gets altered correspondingly right. So these things actually complicate this matter this is purely what we call as a kinematic effect. The moment we are talking about the flame speed and a flame sheet and the flame is trying to balance the flow that kind of idea all the dynamics is considered within the flame. We have, we have long gone we have long passed we have, we have long gone past the point where we have to worry about the dynamics of the, the, the energy balance and the, uh, the species balance and so on that happens within the structure of the flame. We only worry about the how the shape changes now so this is not even dynamics it is purely kinematical effects right. So this these are th some of the things that happen uh, in the case of, uh, of let us say premix flames similar things also happen in diffusion flames uh, except that we do not really uh, talk too much about it. So let us suppose that you now had a simplified uh, gas turbine construct where you now try to have a flame that goes like this and then you now adopt a Burke Schumann uh, approach to, to strictly get a diffusion flame because if you did not adopt a Burke Schumann approach where you had a flame sheet assumption where the flame is flame sheet is coincident with the stoichiometric surface and so on all the all the ideas that we that we had then we will have a flame standoff you will have partially premix flame you will have flames that look like more like this that is that is what happens in reality but for the sake of thinking about diffusion flames let us think about like a Burke Schumann flame and suppose that you now have a over ventilated Burke Schumann flame and now let us suppose that we now oscillate the, the flow on top of a mean flow. The mean flow was the one that gave rise to this flame, uh, flame shape all right but the moment you now oscillate this flow you now begin to actually have well what, what would you expect the first order effect of course is the first order effect as we saw earlier is if you now temper temporarily have a flow that is going faster then it should actually prolong the flame right and for the for the other half of the cycle where the flow goes slower it should now shorten the flame. So the flame shape should now begin to change like this and therefore the flame area fluctuates again and the heat release is happening along the flame sheet very similar ideas to what we had just, just talked about for the premix flame exists. So we could we could think like that but that is a more simplistic idea what in reality happens is like what we talked about that means you also have like a, a, a wavy structure that, that goes on for this flame depending upon the frequency and the length scale of this flame and therefore you have to factor that into And so typically what we are interested in is what is the heat release fluctuation as a ratio of the mean heat release for a given velocity fluctuation as a ratio of the mean velocity. So you have now two things one is heat release fluctuation over the mean, fluctu mean heat release divided by the uh, velocity fluctuation uh, over the mean velocity right. So this is, a, this is a quantity that is typically referred to as 
uh, the, the, the flame transfer function or something like that and there is a lot of work that has been going on um, in these things. Essentially we are looking at what is the flame response to the oscillations and what we can understand in the gas phase flame context is uh, these oscillations are essentially happening because of the velocity fluctuations. So you do not expect a big effect for pressure fluctuations that are associated with acoustic waves it is the velocity fluctuations that are causing the, the, the havoc. Right. So a, a quick fix for you would be if you, if you find that there are huge oscillations that are happening is it possible for me to locate where the flame exists this the, the bluff body here or the flame um, the, the fuel injection point here in a place where I have what is called as a velocity node in the standing wave mode. So you have a standing wave and, and uh, you have velocity nodes then try to locate the flames there so that the flames are more silent. Right. So they are not really subjected to huge velocity fluctuations no matter what the amplitude is because regardless of what the amplitude of the perturbation is the node is going to always have a zero velocity amplitude. Right. So if you now try to locate your flames closer to the nodes of course the point is the presence of the flame itself changes the, changes the, uh, the, the, the mode the, the, the acoustic mode shape. Okay. So you have to actually sort of dynamically chase the no the, the, the velocity node and then lo, 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 locate it so it is sort of, it is a little bit more involved than just saying that. And similarly there are other problems like many times in fact one of the things that I have not talked about here is if you now have a bluff body you now have a vortex shedding that is associated with it and the vortex now begins to curl the flame and that increases or decreases the, the, uh, the, 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 the flame area and these vortices are shed. So when the vortices are shed they take away a part of the flame and burn them somewhere there and then a new flame is established and so on. So you now have heat release oscillations that are associated with vortex shedding and now you have a new time scale in the problem relative to the vortex, related to the vortex shedding frequency and how is this vortex shedding frequency going to relate with the natural acoustic mode of the duct that is satisfying the acoustic boundary conditions will now also begin to play, play a huge role. In, in trying to dictate what the uh, uh, acoustic amplitudes are and, and the other the, the amplitudes of the other fluctuations. So this is now getting to be quite complicated. In the solid rockets on the other hand you have a very different situation. What you have is now if you think about a, 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 a solid rocket obviously we are talking about combustion chambers so combustor instability so we have to look at a, a solid rocket uh, motor in which if you now have a propellant that is shaped like this then everything that is happening uh, that, that matters to us is within a very short distance from the, from the surface of from the burning surface of the propellant and, this, and within this very short distance uh, effectively if you now for example think about um, uh, the, the, this, this region and then of course we talked about a, a, a homogeneous propellant which has like a, a, a pre, premixed flame or a heterogeneous propellant where you have let us say something like oxidizer particles and then you have some diffusion flame maybe some edge flame here and then a monopropellant flame there and, and so on. The question is what is the effect of the acoustic oscillations in this chamber on this flame and here Typically the way the solid propellant uh, rocket design is done is to look for how is the burning rate of the propellant dependent on pressure okay. So and usually you get a, 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 a picture that looks like the R goes as P like that and this is actually a log 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 plot okay. And what we are talking about now is if I increase my pressure then I expect that the reaction rates should increase therefore the flames will now get attached closer to the surface and therefore they will send in more heat to the burning surface and then give rise to more gases that are coming out right. So as the pressure locally increases we expect that the, the rate, of, rate at which gases are coming out should increase or, or the burning rate should increase that the instantaneous burning rate should increase and therefore it now puts in more gas into the chamber and that pressurizes the system more and if the pressure and, and when you now have 
a, a, a less pressure because of the acoustic perturbation then the burning kind of slows down and it puts less gas into the into the chamber. So, that relieves this and then the pressure uh, the, the, the pressure decrease further decreases. So, when you now have an oscillatory uh, pressure then the, the, the way the propellant burns could or most of the time does actually uh, help the pressure to increase and decrease more and more. So, here instead of looking at a velocity fluctuation based flame response as we did in the gas phase combustor we look at a pressure based propellant combustion response all right and here again we can now think about a response function where this is actually in not in terms of heat release fluctuations and velocity fluctuations this is in terms of mass fluctuations uh, relative to pressure fluctuations. So, this the, 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 the characteristic that we are using here to, to look at how the propellant responds to the acoustics is slightly different from how, how, how we deal with in, in, in this class of uh, problems. Finally, let us now look at uh, the system instability. This again is not directly related to combustion, uh, but it affects combustion. So, this is mainly seen in gas turbines and uh, liquid rockets <coughs> particularly gas gas based gas turbines liquid rocket uh, you can say fuel here uh, you can say propellant here uh, both of them together you are looking at the feed system. So, the best or the simplest example that we can think of is when you now have a, 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 a situation um, actually it does not have to be fuel it could ok fine. So, let us suppose that we have um, air coming in or oxidizer coming in and then you now inject your fuel on the side and your so that means in this region the fuel and air actually mix with each other and then you now have a, a premix flame that is set up there right. What we are now saying is well now if you have a perturbation ok this flame now perturbs and then gives rise to heat release fluctuations which now sets up acoustic wave. So, you now have a acoustic standing wave uh, from here to there of course, taking into account like a, a step change that is possible right. So, in this acoustic mode where the fuel in inlet is actually located the the, the pressure here is actually going to fluctuate because of the acoustics and when the pressure fluctuates you now have a delta p fluctuation for the fuel inlet and that is going to correspond to actually a fuel mass flow rate fluctuation. So, when your fuel mass flow rate fluctuates for a given constant mass flow rate of air then you have what is called as equivalence ratio fluctuations. So, this leads to something called phi prime we are not even talking about the effect of u prime or the velocity fluctuations we are talking about the effect of the equivalence ratio fluctuations. So, what what basically happens you now have for one half of the cycle where the pressure is actually increasing here then you have less fuel coming in. So, this is slightly leaner than design point ok. So, when it is leaner the flame now uh, burns slower therefore, it, 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 it elongates, but then when you go to the next half of the cycle where the pressure decreases you have more fuel that is coming in and then mixes with the air. But the crucial thing is it is not an instantaneous mixing everywhere in the in the in the flow field in this in the in this inlet. So, you now have a fuel pocket that now convects down at the flow speed. So, the question is when the flame is trying to come back if you now have a fuel pocket that arrives there with of course, mixed with air and makes it less leaner then the flame will want to come back more that accentuates the instability. So, when we say when the fuel pocket comes uh, comes here that means, it is got to do with what is this distance relative to what is the velocity right. So, there is a convective time delay for pockets of fuel to uh, mix with air and come. So, the equivalence ratio now fluctuates because of the convective time delay and that can feed back into how the flame wants to flap back and forth and change its area and get along with 
the, the combustion instability because of that. Similarly in the case of uh, liquid rockets typically what they do as far as design is concerned is in order to avoid something like this they have an injection uh, 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 injector plate which is designed to take a, a delta P across the injector, injector plate the, the pressure uh, the, the injection pressure uh, is essentially the pressure upstream of the injector plate relative to the combustion chamber pressure. So it is essentially a, a pressure differential delta, delta P and the way they design this is they want to have this delta P to be at least about 20 percent of the chamber pressure that means the injection pressure upstream of the injector plate should be 20 percent more than the, com the combustion chamber pressure so much delta P so that any oscillations that are happening in the combustor is not really felt upstream. You now have a fairly robust high pressure over here which can push the, the, um, the, 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 the propellants pretty much at the same rate regardless of the small fluctuations there. If this were only marginally more for example right uh, then any fluctuations here will propagate upstream significantly and cause fluctuations in the flow rates of the uh, the, the, the liquid fuel and liquid oxidizer and therefore now when they mix and burn everything is going to oscillate and then that is good that could actually increase these oscillations even more and more. And, and in fact many times when, when this is not done right then these fluctuations can actually propagate all the way upstream to the tank that is where they, they get arrested. So now your feed line has a certain acoustic characteristics anything that is confined has acoustic characteristics because of possible reflections and standing wave modes and so on right. So the feed line can amplify the acoustics if it resonates with the oscillations that are there in the combustor. So many times like the combustor could have something called radial modes whereas um, the, the feed line could have a longitudinal mode at the, at, the, at the same frequency and so on. When these things couple with each other then these oscillations become significant and then the, then the whole uh, system begins to have oscillations all over the place uh, basically then uh, telling us that system instability is a very big problem right. But of course those are now getting into mechanical details a little bit moving away from combustion but you have to keep in mind that the, the heat release fluctuations in the combustion is like the primary driver for any perturbations to grow and all other things begin to couple with it. So as a matter of fact simple, simple similarly when you now look at uh, um, things like uh, solid rockets where you have uh, let us say what is called a segmented rockets which have inhibitors the inhibitors can now protrude into the flow uh, when, when the propellant burns and it can, it can now produce vortices and these vortices give rise to pressure oscillations but that is not significant many times when compared to what it can do to the propellant combustion response to be become significant. So this is like a trigger and then the propellant combustion response now uh, uh, takes over and causes the combustion instability. So many times there are a lot of other things in the system that uh, will, will go, go together with the combustion event once the combustion event is inherently unstable or susceptible to acoustic uh, instability. So the system, system instability typically uh, is, is, a, is a secondary effect it is a combustion instability that, that we should uh, mainly focus on trying to damp as much as we can. So we do not want to get into how to damp these things just wanted to point out that uh, just, just wanted to point out two things one such problems exist things are not as steady as what uh, we have been going through. Uh, they are inherently unsteady or they are susceptible to perturbations that, that, is, that is number one. Second we can understand many of these things based on whatever we have studied uh, uh, with, with laminar flows, laminar combustion and uh, steady state uh, ideas and so on. But the, 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 the problems are lot deeper when compared to what meets the eye in this lecture, thanks a lot.